Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It was in 1997, the Lord, He brought us out of the organized churches, the organized fellowships, if you will, and He began to teach us and show us about the things that are coming. And one of the things the Lord shared with us uh, was about uh, that He would make His people, in many cases, in, in lots of ways, uh, invisible to the enemy. Okay? Invisible where we are not able to be discerned or to be known, okay, to the enemy. Now, when we think of invisible, we think of not being able to see with the sense of sight, you know, and that's part of it. But it, it goes a little deeper than that also because. God can make us invisible. And I woke up this morning and I just had a New York City was coming to my mind, LA, uh, all the big cities, Chicago, Philadelphia, you know, these Houston. Uh I grew up in Houston, Texas, so I'm kind of familiar with a big city. But anyway, these cities were coming to me and the Lord says in Psalm 29 verse 10 and 11, it says, The Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yea, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto His people. The Lord will bless His people with peace. With peace. Hallelujah. And we know from uh, a hurricane, right in the middle of a hurricane, there's an eye, and it's very calm in there. And right in the middle of all this that's fixing to come upon this nation of America, there's going to be places where there's going to be eyes where where the Lord will see us, okay? And He will keep us in the midst of the storm, all right? But we must be in His will. We must not fear. We must not let that spirit of fear even have a, a toehold in our minds, okay? Because of what we see with the natural eye, what we see going on, fires or, or you know, murder, mayhem, chaos, whatever's happening, we can't let that affect us. We have to remember. That's why it's important to read the Bible and to stay in the Word and memorize the Word, okay? Because when you memorize the Scripture, you have it in your mind, okay? Like an actor would memorize all of his lines of his of his uh, movie that he's making or a play that they're in, okay? Some of these Shakespearean actors, they memorize whole plays of Shakespeare, you know? I mean, and so God's people, God says, memorize the Scripture. Put it in, because then the Holy Spirit can draw it to your attention to bring it back to memory to you, okay? And so when the flood's overwhelming, you can remember this Scripture, the Lord sitteth upon the flood. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 59, it says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, okay? We'll see the Lord sitting on that flood. The Lord's on top of there, okay? It says the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against them. And that standard is the Word of God. That standard is the Holy Spirit and the Word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Over here in 2 Kings, chapter 6, there's a story of Elisha and Gehazi, okay? And also the the Syrian army. And the Syrian army, the king of Syria, is, is getting freaked out because everywhere he goes, the you know, the prophet Elisha knows what's going on. God told him. And so, uh, starting at verse 14, it, therefore sent he thither horses, okay, the, the king of Syria sent in horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, and hosts compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. See, fear not. This is, a, this is going to be a big thing, okay, in what's coming. We, we cannot fear. We cannot fall into fear. Fear not. Why? Well, what, do you want, what are you talking about, Elisha? You don't want me to fear and this whole army surrounding us? And Elisha says, For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Hallelujah. See, they that be with us are more than they that be with the enemy. Okay, only one third of the angels fell. There's still two thirds backing us up. Hallelujah! 
Okay, not to mention the Holy Spirit and the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we have uh, a greater army with us than the enemy has with him. But see, the enemy uses fear. He uses fear and discouragement and oppression and, and depression, all these things, okay? Okay. So this, this whole army surrounding them, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Lord. Now this man could see in the natural realm, okay? But he said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Hallelujah. Praise God. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord. Now here's the key, okay? See, when you're walking in the will of God, and you're, you're doing what God's telling you to do, okay? You're sinking into him. You're drawing nigh to God, and God's drawing nigh to you, as it says in James, okay? See, God's invested authority in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. All authority has been given to Him, okay? And when we are in His will, we know that He has all authority. He says to us, go, okay? He gives us, like when He tells an angel, all right? He says to a an holy angel, He says, come here. And that holy angel is standing at attendance before God. And God says to that angel, and it could be the smallest angel in heaven, okay? And God can tell that angel, you go down to earth, you go down there, and you help Sharon, or you help John, or you help Bill, or Sue, or, or whoever, and you go down there and help them, and you do this, this, and this. Well, that angel, right then at that moment, has full authority from God to do what God has told him to do. All power, see, to do it. And he knows it, so he comes down and executes the plan of God. Does he meet resistance? Probably so. Hallelujah. But he gets the job done because God has said so. So when God tells us to do something, we have the authority to do it. We have the power to do it. Hallelujah. Okay. So Elisha's a man of God. He said, let a double portion be upon me. Okay. So the double portion of the spirit of Elijah came upon Elisha. Okay. So Elisha is, and he's also the prophet of resurrection. Okay. And, and so here he is. They came to him, and Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people with blindness. Hallelujah. Smite this people with blindness. Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Okay? You see what, see what that says? So in this time coming up, there's going to be uh, many circumstances where many of God's people in the cities and in the country too, all around the earth right now it's happening all over the world and it's probably happening here where God will say do this or stand to one side move to the right three steps or whatever God says do it okay you'll just have that impression people talk about hearing the voice of God and they say oh you got to hear the voice of God here and so we have an understanding in our mind that it's I got to hear his voice like you're hearing my voice right now and that's not necessarily what it is you'll have an impression in your spirit, just right, right in the middle of your your the, the bottom of your rib cage, right there in your spirit, you'll have an impression. Move three steps to the right. You know, a story comes to me about the towers. When the towers went down, I heard this story and this testimony. This woman was given it, and she was on the eighty-something story floor or something of the second tower or whatever. And they said, "Everybody stay put. Everything's fine." And the Holy Spirit said, "Run for your life. Run for your life." and kept screaming at her. You know, she just kept hearing the Holy Spirit telling her, run for your life. So she hit the stairwell. She came out. She was still not, not down to the bottom yet. She was in this big open atrium area, and the Holy Spirit was just telling her, run for your life. Run. She just kept running and running and running, and then she was out on the street. And, and she was just saying, oh, Jesus, Jesus. And this other lady was saying the same. They were just running down the street. See? And she listened to the Spirit of God, and therefore her life was spared. And the other people that listened to man... Okay, and they were in fear. They were listening to man. You know, unfortunately, a lot of people didn't make it out. We all know the story. But Elisha, okay, Elisha the prophet, he knows the Lord. He's following on with the Lord. He's walking with the Lord. And Gehazi's freaking out. You got all these chariots 
You know, all these people around, this big army, this big hose fixing to whack them. Okay, until Elisha says, Lord, open his eyes so he can see there's more with us than with them. Hallelujah. And that's the truth. There is. There's more with us. we got to remember that. Okay? Because you won't see it with your natural sight. But the angels are all around God's people. The Bible says they encamp around us. They're protecting us. They're keeping us in this hour. Hallelujah. Now, he said, Smite them with blindness. Okay? In verse 19, And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom you seek. But he led them to Samaria. Okay? So, when, when God smote them with blindness, they could still see in the natural. But their whole discernment, their whole mind, something tweaked, God tweaked something in their mind where they could not even know where they were located. Isn't that awesome? That's awesome, isn't it? One time, Sharon and I, the Lord showed us about the invisible man, the invisible Christian, back in 1998, 97. And we used to stop at this little convenience store every morning. Uh, on my way to work, we'd go by this little convenience store and get some coffee. And this this uh, Vietnamese guy worked there. And he would say hi to both of us. And we'd talk to him, you know. And we'd talk to him about the Lord or whatever. And then we'd leave. And then the Lord showed us about this invisibility and that he would do for his people. And we went in one morning and the guy was just talking to me. And he didn't even say hi to Sharon or anything because he couldn't see her. She was invisible to him. But she wasn't invisible to me or anybody else. But God did something in his mind where he could not see that she was there. Okay? Now this is an awesome thing. Okay? Awesome. But we must remember, no fear. Okay? When that thing of fear tries to attack you, take that thought captive. Take it captive. Cast down that imagination. See? Throw it out in Jesus' name. Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass, when they were come into Samaria, that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes, and they saw. And behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I'm going to share this testimony with you. I said in a, in a previous video to get the book The Heavenly Man by Brother Yun, okay? Y-U-N is his last name, and Tim Hathaway. And this book is a powerful testimony of Brother Yun from China, Apostle from China, in the um, Back to Jerusalem movement, and Underground Church. Now, Brother Yun was in prison for the fourth time in, in Zhengzhou province, the maximum security prison, okay, on the third floor. He had both of his legs busted. They smashed both legs from the knee down where he could not walk. They said, you will not escape here, Brother Young. You will not get out. They smashed his legs. Well, he was in there. He had to lift his legs up on top of the wall to stretch him out on the wall so that it would alleviate the pain a little bit. And all he had on was his underwear. He was in this cell, okay, on the third floor. And so you have this long corridor of, 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 you know, cell block, and you have to unlock each door and, you know, let the prisoners out or whatever. Well, the Lord, he had a dream, and in the dream his wife said, you've got to get out, young, you've got to escape. Then he woke up, and the Lord gave him a scripture out of Jeremiah, which unfortunately I can't remember right now, um, because I loaned my book out, and somebody's got it, and I don't know who I gave it to, so I can't read it, but I want to get a copy too. Anyway, uh... The Lord told him, you got to escape. you got to get out. Then, uh, Peter Zhu, who was in the cell next to him, knocked on the wall and said, Yun, you got to escape. you got to get out. The Lord says, you got to go. And so he's like, how in the world can I get out? You know. And, and so the impression is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And finally, he just gets up and walks out the door. He goes out the door of his, of his cell, walks down to the main door where the guard shack is or whatever, the guard station, and the door swings open. And one of the prisoners walks through with a broom, a trustee, and Yun walks through, goes past the guard, down the stairs, past the other guard, down the stairs again, to the, to the bottom level, okay? All this time he's saying, Lord, receive my spirit when they shoot me in the back. Lord, receive my spirit when they shoot me in the back. And he goes out into the courtyard, 
okay, of this big prison, maximum security prison in China, and all these guards are standing out there with guns, and Yun's walking across this yard in his underwear, and he gets to the main door, big iron door of this prison with big wall around, and the door's open just a little bit, and he goes through the door, and a cab comes by and picks him up, okay, God made him invisible, totally, but he didn't know that, he was just, he was being obedient and just walking, doing. And he went to the house. I mean, I've just got holy bumps, man, thinking about this, how God delivers. And he went to this house, and he went in and you know, he got some money and paid the cab. And then he's riding on the bicycle. This guy was taking him to a safe place. This is a big city in China. He goes, and he's, when he's riding the bicycle, he realized God healed his legs. Hallelujah. Our God is a mighty God. We have nothing to fear from man, nothing to fear from the New World Order, nothing to fear from the devil, nothing to fear at all. We do what God tells us to do when God tells us to do it. And we have nothing to fear. We need to fear God, and that's it. Fear the one who sits upon the throne. And that's all we need to fear. And so when they open their eyes, okay, God opened their eyes that they may see, okay, well, then the Chinese authorities, after Yun got out and was in a safe place, God opened their eyes that they could see. And boy, there was chaos in that place, let me tell you. And then Yun got out of the country with another man's passport. Once again, God blinded them. They couldn't see. He used another guy's passport with another man's picture on it and flew out of Beijing, China, into Germany. Now, that's God working, okay? Because God had work to do for him to do when he got out. Now, another story about Brother Yun. When he got his wife and was, went to get his wife out of Burma, she said, Yun, get rid of those IDs. He had like three or four different IDs from different countries. And he said, ah, oh, no, it'd be all right. See, she knew from the Lord that he needed to get rid of those IDs. Well, when he went to fly out of the country, they emptied his bag and they found all these IDs. He didn't listen to the Spirit of the Lord speaking to him through his wife. And you know what happened? They arrested him. They, they, they threw him. They gave him a seven-year sentence in a Burmese prison in Burma no was it Burma it was Myanmar yeah Burma they threw him in there and it was so bad in there it was no Jesus wasn't in there see God punished him for his disobedience but then God turned it around and used it and he brought 12 men to the Lord inside this wicked place this wicked he said it made China's prisons look like uh, country clubs it was so bad but God God allowed when, when, he, when he went in there God turned it around and men got saved in there he Twelve people were brought to the Lord so that the light of the gospel would, would spread through that prison. Our God's a mighty God. There's, there's a great storm clouds coming. But right in the midst of it, there's an eye. And that's the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's His will. That's, it. that's the calm place. Being in His will. The Bible says, A thousand shall fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come nigh thee. He has given His angels charge over us to protect us in the way that He appoints for us to walk. Hallelujah. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us walk in His way today. Let us be lifted up and remember that our God is a mighty God and He will deliver. And He does every single day deliver His people in every hardship. But see, you've got to know the hardship is a place of, of... God says in Isaiah, He says, I have chosen you in the furnace of affliction. See? All this affliction, all this pressure coming because the economy is crashing and, and, and all, you know, everything that's happening is to get the good wine, the good oil out of His people. God's breaking our vessels so that His Spirit can flow out of us. You see... Because there's many souls that God wants to bring in. But yet they, they look at the Christian church in America and they see a bunch of hypocrites. They see a bunch of people who are stuck on themselves and they're stuck. And so it's hard for them to receive when the church is just like the world. That's why God's bringing everybody down to one level. So that His Spirit can flow through us. And He will keep us in the midst of the storm. He is a holy God. He will not forsake us. He's never forsaken us, and He never will. He's always with us. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name.